ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما فان خير الكلام كلام الله واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار وبعد ان شاء الله today we wish to return back to the hadith that we began and that is the hadith of Uqba ibn Amir that tremendous hadith where he sought from the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advice and that advice as we mentioned it is the advice which is important for each and every single one of us and that the sahaba that they were constant in seeking out the affairs that would benefit them in the hereafter and likewise in the life of this world and so uqba ibn amr he asked the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ya rasulullah man najah o oh, messenger of allah what is salvation or how may i attain salvation and we mentioned in the previous weeks that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he responded with three pieces of advice the first of them amsik alayka lisanak that you should guard your tongue and the second piece of advice that he mentioned wal yasaka baytuk and that you should remain or make your home be sufficient for you remain in your home wabki ala khati'atik and that you should cry and weep over your errors and your mistakes and your sins and so today inshallah we'll mention the second or in regards to that which is related to the second piece of advice and that is the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam advising uqba wal yasaka baytak that you should cling and remain in your homes and we should realize that as we mentioned in, in regards to the tongue that the tongue allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has entrusted us with and he has placed us over it and the tongue it can be a means of attaining much good and likewise it can be a means of attaining harm and making a person or causing a person to fall into ruin and so likewise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his blessings is that he has given us an abode that we can protect ourselves that we can protect ourselves from the harms of the dunya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned wallahu ja'ala lakum min buyutikum sakanan and that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that he has made for you your homes as a repose meaning a place of tranquility a place of security a place of refuge that these that your homes and your houses that allah has made them as a blessing for you and he has made them as a repose i.e. a place where one can seek sanctuary protection from the life of the world and so because of this blessing or that this blessing is such that it protects you from so much it protects you from the elements the wind and the rain and the sun and the heat and so on it protects you ordinarily from 
those animals and insects and the likes. It protects your female folk in that their aura and that their beauty is not shown outside of the home and that a person gets to benefit from the beauty of his wife and his daughters and the likes. It is also a place where one's honor may be maintained. Um, the, inside his home, his honor is maintained and so on. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has placed upon us these places of residence as a means of sakanan or as a means as a, of a repose and refuge and protection. And so these houses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, particularly in the times of trials and afflictions, are where we need to escape, if you like, or race towards the homes, particularly in times of affliction. And as we have mentioned many times before, that we are living in a time of affliction. Fitna is widespread. Fitna out, outside of the home and in the world in which we live is prevalent now. Fitna of many types, fitna of wealth, the fitna of women, the fitna of status and position, the fitna of fighting and killing, and the greatest of all fitna, the fitna of shirk. And we are living in a land of shirk and in a land of unbelief. So know that the fitna are plentiful. And so when the fitna becomes plentiful, one should hasten towards his home. This does not mean, however, that one removes himself from the community, but rather he spends time within his home. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned Alif Lamim. Asiban nasu an yutraku an yakulu amanna wa la yuftanun. Alif Lamim, does mankind think? that he will be left alone simply because he says we believe and that he will not be tested know that the trials and the calamities are many and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to test the believers in regards to their iman and test them in regards to their faith and Allah is well aware of those who believe and those who disbelieve on an occasion the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said to Muawiyah, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said to him, Ya Muawiyah, lam yabqa min dunya illa bala'un wa fitnatun. He said that, O oh, Muawiyah, nothing remains of this dunya, nothing remains of this world, except for trials and tribulations. Nothing is left of this world except for what? Trials and tribulations. And so if that is the case, know that a person should prepare himself for when those trials and tribulations come about. From them is as the mission of Allah Sallallahu said, I'm sickly sanak. Hold your tongue. Guard your tongue, particularly in times of fitna. Because when you speak, you may be aiding and increasing the fitna. When you talk about the affair, you are making or you are perhaps making the affair worse. But if you speak with that which is correct, then that is good. But quite often, how many people speak in ignorance and they increase and further the fitna? Likewise, cling to your homes. Cling to your homes in times of fitna. Because those trials, if a person is out embroiled in the fitna becoming engaged in the fitna then they're going to be afflicted by way of that trial afflicted by way of those trials whether that trial is in regards to fighting and killing or whether that trial is in regards to backbiting and slander whatever the trial may be that if a person is in his home he is further away from the harm than being near to the harm So from the fitan, as we mentioned, the fitan are many. From them is wealth. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi mentioned that indeed for every nation, inna li kulli ummatin fitnatan. That for every nation, 
there was a fitna or there is a fitna wa fitna to ummati al mal that for every every nation there was a trial or there is a trial and a fitna tribulation and the tribulation of my nation is going to be wealth likewise allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran inna ma amwalukum wa auladukum fitna indeed your wealth and your children they are a trial your wealth and your children are a trial because one's wealth and likewise one's children can quite often divert a person away from the remembrance of Allah because of that love that you have for these two things love for the wealth because we are in need of it we need it for our day to day living but we need or we, we should pursue it in a manner which is good utilizing that which we need and not becoming overwhelmed with wealth and likewise in regards to our children we have a natural love for our children and sometimes that natural love can cause us to become weakened that we see them disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we see them doing that which is displeasing to Allah but due to our weakness and our love for them we allow them to continue with disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result they become a fitna and a trial upon us those aspirations that we had for our children when they were young they no longer wish to follow those desires that we used to have we wanted them to be this and we wanted them to be that but now then they're, they're not they're not following that path or rather they're doing something which is displeasing to you but because of that love that you have for them and that weakness that you have in regards to them you don't inform them or you don't enjoin upon them the good and you don't forbid them from evil likewise the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions that indeed the hour is about to be established wherein knowledge will be taken away and ignorance will prevail and there will be much harj and there will be much harj and when the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was asked what is al harj ya rasulullah he said al qatl it is killing so there will be much trial and tribulation upon the earth so much so that there will be much killing taking place but when will that take place when knowledge is removed knowledge is removed i i by way of the scholars and knowledge is removed and then ignorance becomes widespread and when ignorance becomes widespread you will see a prevalence of killing and also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions even though that killing and that murder is severe that it is something which is azim tremendous something which is severe allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something greater than that they mention wal fitnatun ashaddu min al qatl and fitna it is more severe than killing more severe than murder so what is the meaning of fitna here as the mufassirin they explain that al fitna here it is shirk the meaning of fitna in this ayah it is a shirk association of partners to allah in worship that you take others besides allah and that you give them the, the worship that is deserved only to allah the creator of the heavens and the earth the one who has blessed mankind with everything that he possesses the all knowing the all seeing the all hearing the one whom we bow down ourselves to and prostrate to that fitna ashaddu min al qatl that shirk with allah that is worse than even murder worse than even killing that a believer is killed or that an individual is killed whilst he is being put to trial with shirk is more severe than if he was upon istiqama and firm upon his deen and he was being murdered for his deen fitna is more severe than killing this is the trials and these are from the trials that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned and so in regards to those trials 
When those trials occur, when those trials occur, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he has advised us with remaining in one's home, staying in one's home. أقول لك ولهذا واستغفر الله ولكم واستغفر إن الله غفور رحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد. So the advice of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that he gave to Uqba ibn Amir is that well يسأك بيتك and cling to your home. Cling to your homes, particularly when fitna becomes widespread. As for outside of those times, when fitna is not widespread, then we mix and we mingle amongst each other. We mix and we mingle because Islam, as we know, is a community-based religion. And humankind and human beings, they are naturally inclined towards others. They are naturally inclined towards working alongside others. So therefore, the origin of the affair is that a person does not cling to his home and isolate himself and ostracize himself from the community. That is not what Allah or his messenger have commanded. But in those times when trials become plentiful and a person fears upon himself the afflictions of those trials, in those times a person can practice what is referred to as i'tizal or uzla, isolation and staying away from the people. But rather, as we mentioned, that the affair is one of being united and being together and being upon unity. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ Allah mentions and cling all of you to the rope of Allah. وَاَعْتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Cling all of you to the rope of Allah together and do not be divided. Do not be separated. So here we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded the Muslim community with unity and being together and not being separate from one another. But if those affairs occur wherein blood is being shed or fighting is taking place, or trials and tribulations have become plentiful, then in those times, safeguard yourself. Because from the means of salvation for an individual is to cling to his home in those times. That being said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned in regards to the believer, he said that, Al-Mu'minu ladhi yukhalitu nas وَيَسْبِعُ عَلَىٰ آذَاهُمْ خَيْرٌ That the believer who mixes and mingles and interacts with the people وَيَسْبِعُ عَلَىٰ آذَاهُمْ And he is patient upon their harm خَيْرٌ is better مِنَ الَّذِي لَا يُخَالِتُ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْبِعُ عَلَىٰ آذَاهُمْ He is better And in one riwayah he mentioned أَعْذَمُ أَجْرًا and he is greater in reward than the one who does not mix with the people and he does not and he is not patient upon their harms upon their harm so if a person is able to he does not remove himself and isolate himself from the people particularly if he is a person of knowledge because if he is a person of knowledge then how will the people learn if he isolates himself away from them Rather, what is better as a believer, particularly with, as, uh, for someone with knowledge, is that he mixes with the people, he mingles with the people, he interacts with the people, and he's patient with their harm, patient with their questions, patient with their, uh, their seeking of advice, patient with their phone calls, constantly phoning at all hours of the day. But he's patient, he doesn't remove himself and isolate himself from them because he wants to benefit them with that which Allah has benefited him with. So that he is able to call them to Allah and remind them with the dhikr of Allah and remind them with the fear of Allah and to command them with that which is good and to forbid them from that which is evil. And with that, inshallah, we conclude. Wallahu alam wa bilay tawfiq wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad.